This is Dr. Chris's radio horror program on 91.3 FM, WCUW in Worcester, Massachusetts. And if you're not listening to this recorded interview, then hopefully you're checking us out on the Radio Horror YouTube channel. Tonight on the show, we have an author, a horror female author on with the show with us, Laura McLagan, all the way from Argentina. Thank you for coming on the show with us, Laura. Oh, thank you so much, Chris, for inviting me. <laughs> yes, we met in a rather unusual Facebook group. I'm not going to get into the group on Facebook because that's a whole different type of thing. But uh, <laughs> you've, uh, you, your horror, being a horror writer and being a female horror writer kind of caught my eye. And I was just like, oh, I don't know much about these books, but these, uh, these covers really kind of struck out to me. Tell the audience a little bit about yourself. I'm um, a horror writer. I also write um, drama and uh, horror and gore books. And I'm from Argentina. I'm 28 years old. I also run my own publisher. You self-publish? Yes, I run my uh, own publisher, but it's a self-publishing company. Is it very hard being a self-publisher in Argentina? Not really, but uh, I think it's uh, it's the best option. Did you like try and send your books to publishing companies, even in other countries like the United States? Not yet, because uh, I'm still translating my books, uh, but I think uh, I will. What was the first book that you uh, started working on? Uh, my first book was um, Anna. But it's a, a drama book. But, it's not horror. But you can still tell us about it. I like the cover of it. Tell us what Anna's about. Anna um, is about three students of college. They, they start writing letters, anonymous letters. And they, they tell their problems there. It's a very interesting story. Okay, what's Cementario? What's that about? Uh, Cementario um, is about cycles. <laughs> Yeah, because I like the human mind. Um, I think it's it could be very dark sometimes. The the, um, the book is uh, divided into um, two parts. Um, there are twenty short stories, men characters, and the other ten are women characters. Cementario. What's the plot line? What are some of the characters in the book? Ah, oh, the characters. Well, there are, there are lots of them. And the stories are uh, connected. So you you like... have to read them all to, to finally understand uh, the concept. For example, the, the cover has the two genres. I mean, um, the grapes are representing a man and the hills are representing women. And then your last book is um, Canada? Yes, How do you say I, that? it's Canada. Okay. What's that about? It's about uh, a man who was locked away by his wife. She's a vet. And uh, this man was was so bad. <laughs> he was a bad person. And uh, he started poisoning her dogs, her patients, let's say. Why? And it's uh, because um, he doesn't like pets. She, she wants revenge. He was poisoning her animals because she, he doesn't like her pets? Yes. That's messed up. She wants to revenge. She wants yeah. revenge, so she, she poisons them. She him away and uh, start injecting hormones to become him a dog. Wow, that's messed up. <laughs> yeah, lots of torture. What, um, what inspires you to write? What was some inspiration growing up? I was inspired by the human centipede. You were, I'm sorry, say that again. You were inspired by what? Yeah, uh, the humans, uh, is it centipede or centipede? Uh, centipede, I don't know yeah. So you were inspired to become a writer by the, the human centipede trilogy? This book in particular. I became a writer because of uh, Stephen, Stephen King. I'm a huge fan of him. Of who? Say that again. Uh, Stephen King. Stephen King. Stephen King. Okay, yes, yes, yes. I like Stephen King as well. What book in particular of Stephen King's did you enjoy? Oh, The Long Walk. It's my favorite one. Which one? The Long Walk. The Long Walk. I don't... Hold on a second. Let me look that up. We edit this too, yeah. by the way, so don't worry. The Long... The Long Walk uh, was read Richard Bachman, uh, his pseudonym. Oh, right. Okay, that's why I'm not familiar with it. All right. Wow, this book is pretty old, too. It came out in 1979. Yeah. It's one of his best books, I swear. I'll take your word for it. That's actually one of the few Stephen King books I haven't read. I just got done listening to an audiobook for The Dead Zone. <laughs> I just love him. It's such an amazing author. Did you see it? Yeah, but uh, I prefer reading books uh, than watching movies. 
So you're a bigger fan of his actual books than the uh, movies adapted based on them? Yeah, definitely. Books are the best. I think his best novel is probably either The Stand or Pet Cemetery. Oh, I love Pet Cemetery. It's fabulous. I recently listened to the audiobook. The audiobook was narrated by uh, the actor from the TV series Dexter. Wow. Yeah, Michael C. Hall, I think his name is. Yeah, Michael C. Hall. Um, uh, I thought he read it perfectly, but I absolutely hated I the... I uh, have to listen to it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's really good. You can find it on Audible. Audible is the uh, Amazon you know, app. Um, yeah, Michael C. Hall from Dexter narrated it. I absolutely hated the new movie. I love the original movie, but I absolutely hated the new movie. But the uh, Pet Cemetery audiobook, uh, now the new Pet Cemetery audiobook is, is amazing. Growing up, what were some of your favorite uh, writers? You mentioned off the air uh, Anne Rice, an interview with the vampire. Uh, yes, uh, I love Anne Rice. And uh, I also love uh, um, Lovecraft and Bowie. Yeah, H.P. And... Lovecraft. He, um, he actually is buried here in uh behind us in rhode island in providence and we have a big hp lovecraft festival coming up this august wow that's amazing i wish i could go <laughs> what uh which one of his stories do you enjoy the most uh well um definitely uh, tulu the, the uh they call it cthulhu yeah uh, they call <laughs> yes the shadows over Innsmouth or reanimator is the uh the two stories of lovecraft that i love the most and then the movie dagon which is a adaptation of shadows over Innsmouth, i think is absolutely perfect i don't watch uh too much movies uh i have to be honest that's fine there <laughs> was a um what's funny is that there is a uh there's a comic book called tomb of dracula and the guy who wrote it said that he has only ever read the novel Dracula and never seen a single film adaptation of Dracula ever to never have it influence his writing. Wow, that's interesting. How long does it take you to typically write a novel? It depends. It could take um, six or eight months, but I, I try to publish one book per year at least. One book a year is a really good goal to try and meet. I mean, that's that can be really difficult for some authors. I know I've struggled with uh, a couple different uh, book projects that I'm working on. One project in particular I want to see published is a collection of stories of filmmakers that made their movies here in New England. They were born here in New England, and they made their movies here in New England. Wow, it would be good. You mentioned uh, going back a little bit to uh, Human Centipede. What was it about Human Centipede that really inspired you? I mean, the movie is considered to be reviled by people. Why Why was that movie so influential to you? As I said before, I I really enjoy and like um, the, um, the human mind and, and how dark it can be. I don't know. It really inspires me. And I always write about uh, how dark it, it can be. Uh, I don't write par paranormal stories or, I don't know, zombies. I, I just focus on, on the human mind. Is there, any other, um, is there any other subject or media that you take inspiration from? Well, Stephen King's stories are, are definitely my inspiration. Do you believe in the supernatural in any way? <laughs> I don't know, but why not? I mean, um, I have never seen a ghost before. Or something like that, and I would like to. <laughs> I don't have a lot of belief in the supernatural. I believe in aliens. I mean, I believe in like you know, you have, you know, people from outer space, like you know, far off planets. But I've never had a belief in the supernatural too much. No. <laughs> no, I just, unfortunately, really? I don't. Yeah, I just, I've never seen a ghost, so I just, I don't believe it exists. And people say, well, you know, you've never seen this, but how do you know it exists? I'm like, because it's there's fact that this exists you know what i mean like they say you've never seen uh yeah, but, but have you seen um... no but i cannot believe <laughs> listen but hold on hold on hold on this is what people say you say i cannot believe we are the only living creatures in the entire galaxy we cannot possibly be the only life in all of the known universes yeah. that is impossible that there is only one planet that has life that's impossible to believe but ghosts, <laughs> I, I just, I can't, I just, I can't wrap my head around that you can come back as a poltergeist or, you know, a Slimer or, or Casper or whatever. <laughs> and that's not making fun of ghosts or people who believe in it. I just, I don't, I've never seen one. So until you show it to me, that's my belief until, uh, until you, until I see it. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree with you. I, I have never seen one. Um, and well, I, I don't know if they exist or not. 
who does your cover designs? Your cover designs are very cool, uh, starting with Cementario. And also, who is Diana Conget? Is that your writer's name? <laughs> okay, I, I will tell you about it. Um, my graphic designer uh, is Jessica Massini. She's amazing. I have an amazing um, art team. And uh, uh, what else did you ask? Sorry. Oh, um, the, the name on the books is different than your name. What is, is that your ah, pen yes, name? Yes, yes. That's because uh, Diana Conchette is uh, my real name and it's for Spanish speakers. And Lerma McLagan is for English speakers. Oh, okay. So you. So That's you, what I'm the so translation. It's like you, so it's like you have like two different identities. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's kind of fun. Where can people go to order uh, your, where can people find your books? They can go to, uh, on Facebook, uh, Editorial Volcanica, and, uh, well, that's my publisher, mm -hmm. and they can buy it there. I will be more than glad to send them a copy. Uh, are you also on Twitter or Instagram? Yeah, uh, my Instagram is uh, Diana Conchette Books. No, no Twitter, I guess. No. <laughs> ha oh, last question is, uh, have you ever thought about turning your books into an audiobook? Uh, yes, definitely, and I will tell you why. My mom uh, was blind, and uh, when I was, she lost her sight when I was eight years old, and I always say that I learned uh, Braille uh, before playing with dolls, and that's why I... I think I, I should uh, um, uh, start recording audio books. Yeah, definitely. It's uh, I, I mean that's that's a that's a great reason to create audiobooks based on the love of your mother since she was blind. I actually have, excuse me, hold on. I actually have three audiobooks uh, out myself. That's amazing. Thank you, thank you. Well, again, uh, right. Laura, uh, again, Laura, uh, Diana, <laughs> thank you for coming on the show with me. I really appreciate it. Thank you, because uh, this is a huge opportunity for me, and uh, this is my, my first uh, international interview, well, in English, let's cool. say, <laughs> because I have been interviewed before uh, in Mexico and Spain, but uh, this is my first time in the USA, so I'm really grateful. Oh, you're absolutely welcome.